Hello YouTube, Adam here again with another computer build. This time I wanted to do something a little bit different. I've been on a little bit of an AliExpress kick lately, so um, I wanted to put together a machine that is based mostly on Chinese parts from uh, AliExpress. Uh, this machine's purpose is going to be doing some downloading of completely legitimate BitTorrent files and then video uh, transcoding, um, which is why I have a, a graphics card for it. So I ended up choosing this uh, B85 ITX motherboard. Um, it seems like reasonably good build quality. It's a very old platform at this point, but for what this machine's actually going to be doing, that should be just fine. Uh, for that, we have a Core i5 4690 uh, Samsung 850 Evo for the boot drive. Um, I'll be putting in probably a, ter a couple of two terabyte hard drives. We have eight gigabytes of Corsair memory here. It's DDR3. I want to try out this snowman cooler because I've heard a lot about these. Uh, this particular one is not the famous one, but Still looked interesting. It has non-addressable RGB. I wouldn't even call it RGB. It has red, green, and blue LEDs on it. It's, it is static, I believe. And then for a video card, we're going to be going with a, a GTX 1660 Super. So uh, this will be interesting. I think these are all made using recycled parts. I'm not really sure. All right, so this is the motherboard that we're using. This is B85 ITX motherboard by Juan Z. Juan Z. I don't know. I apologize. Uh, but, you know, I don't speak Chinese. There's a lot of languages in the world. I speak English. I don't speak Chinese. So uh, the build quality when I got this board was actually surprisingly good. It's only $68, which is reasonable. I mean, you probably pay more than that for a used uh 85, you know, Haswell chipset um, for ITX boards. ITX boards are usually um, pretty sought after, and they don't make as many of them as M as uh, MATX or ATX boards, so they're generally harder to find, but um, the only complaints I really have about this board are related to documentation. It was kind of tricky to get drivers working. Um, Windows did pick up most things, but um, I've not been able to get this sound working correctly. I just cannot find the driver. This is a Realtek Kodak here. Uh, I haven't been able to find one that will work. There's some from Lenovo and stuff. Um, I think it works fine with just the built-in um, driver, but I really would like to get the actual Realtek uh, driver, but it hasn't worked. Uh, the Ethernet, that was easy enough to find a, a proper driver for. Again, Windows had one. Uh, originally, but I found that it was actually crashing on me with the default Windows installation, uh, driver installation, and when I updated to this, uh, it was better, and the chipset is easy to find, this is a B85 chipset, and it is an actual B85 chipset, so those worked fine. Um, I think when I bought this, it was like $65, so the price has apparently gone up a little bit. Prices on AliExpress vary a fair bit. Um, but uh, this is the video card I use by the same manufacturer. So um, these are marked as used or refurbished. I, I mean, I think they're all kind of used and refurbished. So I'm not really sure why that's listed that way. Um, I think these are the same like process that they have for their motherboards where they get actual NVIDIA chipsets, you know, the actual GPU, and then build a card around it because it is from the look of it, their own PCV based on the NVIDIA reference. Um, but it looked like it was new manufacturer ins uh, inspecting it. So uh, that's a really good price for these. Um, obviously, uh, 1660 is not the best GPU. But uh, for my purposes, which was like video encoding, it has the uh, Turing uh, core, which means that it can do all of the... Uh, the NVNC uh, version 2 encoding that I wanted 
Um, I really like this. I've actually purchased two more that are on the way because uh, I have a couple other products that projects that I would like to use with that. And look at that go. Um, there's other manufacturers that have what appear to be the identical card on AliExpress. Um, I go with these guys just because I've bought a few things from them and I know that what I'm getting is uh, correct. I don't know why that says Sandy Bridge there. Hmm. Anyway, uh, this card's legit. It works very well. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I, I uh, have been using it a fair bit. It seems like it performs exactly the same as my Asus and my uh, MSI 1660s that I have. And uh, we'll do a little bit of benchmarking on that. And then as far as the processor, I just got a used uh, i5-4690. This is an old CPU, way back from the Haswell days, but um, for the purposes that I'm using this for, it's fine. Uh, I don't need the newest, fanciest CPU for this particular box. I tend to like to buy machines that are kind of like powered to what they're doing. Uh, my main machine has a Core i9-12 something, like the, it's a high-end CPU, I don't remember the number off the, the top of my head, but um, a lot of times these older machines are a good value if you're using them for specific tasks, and that's, that's what I wanted to do here today. For the case, I have this old Cooler Master Elite 130, I believe. Uh, we have a power supply here, this is an EVGA 500 watt power supply very basic simple power supply but it should be fine for what we're doing today uh, there is currently a build in this this is an old old machine that I did some experimenting with but uh, I'm gonna pull it apart and get the new components in so this had an experimental uh, true NAS scale build on it that I was using for some testing um, and I'm actually thinking that there's probably not gonna be room for this snowman cooler potentially I don't know, it's going to be a close thing when we when we get this out, I'll have to see. Not sure that's going to fit under the power supply area or not. For those that were wondering, this is a Gigabyte C1037UN. This has an integrated um, Celeron processor. I was running with, I believe, 8 gigabytes of memory on a TrueNAS scale installation, just doing some testing on... Uh, I guess you call it validating to make it sound more official. This thing actually ran just fine. Like I wouldn't run a bunch of virtual machines or anything, but TrueNAS scale seems like it's pretty adaptable. Before we get too far into this process, I just want to see if there's any chance that this snowman cooler is even going to fit. It's pretty tall. May have to investigate alternatives. Let's see. I think it may like just clear possibly but the margins so small I don't I don't really feel good about if you look at the margins here the top of the power supply is like less than a finger away and I think that's gonna be right where the intake for the power supply is so I'm not sure that's gonna be a good fit I might have to investigate alternatives well I kind of want to get started where you usually do with the motherboard, and let's see what we actually have in here. So, there's a piece of cardboard that I guess fits over the top to keep everything from flying around and shipping. We have an I.O. shield, SATA cable, plastic clips that look like they're for one of the snowman style um, CPU cooling retention bracket thingies. And then, there's no manual or anything in here, I don't think. We do have a three-year warranty, but that's, I believe, only good in mainland China. And anything under here. Nope, there's more cardboard and foam. So, uh, we're not going to be using those things. Throw them back in there. I will use the SATA cable, probably. And... I mean, that's a pretty normal retail box experience. I would say. It arrived from China in about three weeks, I think. It wasn't so bad. Nice anti-static bag with some of that pink foam. So for the actual motherboard here, it has a reinforced slot, which is always nice to see. Um, Color-coded 
front panel connectors. We're going to have to figure out what those actually are. And for I.O., we have two USB ports, a PS2, display port, HDMI, uh, VGA, dual Ethernet, which is pretty cool. Uh, a couple of USB 3 and two more USB 2 and audio. So uh, we also, on this board, um, which is a little unusual for something of this vintage, meaning the chipset, B85, uh, this is like a new manufactured board from what I understand with recycled chipsets. Uh, but we do have um, a PCI mini expansion slot for Wi-Fi. It actually says Wi-Fi hole, which is kind of funny. Uh, and then, uh, I believe this is just an M SATA, not an M.2 uh, slot. So we can use our fancy dancy modern SSD as well. Not the fastest speed, but relatively modern. Uh, it doesn't come with a CMOS battery. I think there's like shipping things about um, sending those batteries on airplanes from China or something like that. And it looks like as far as fan headers go, we have system fan, this is a three pin, and we have a four pin CPU, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We do have USB 3.0 on the front panel too. Alright, so, as usual, first things first, let's go ahead and get a CPU in here. It doesn't have the little pop out thing. So it's a little hard to even see where our notches are from here, but I believe we are good to go with that. And I think I'm actually going to pivot here a little bit as far as cooling goes. I have this relatively ancient uh, all-in-one cooler. This is a Corsair H80. I, I think is what it's called. It's just a 120 mil radiator. This will be well overkill for what we actually have here, but it I know that this will work in that case because I've had a build in that case before using this. So I'm gonna get this thing set up. All right, we've got our bracket installed. I'm just gonna wipe down the CPU. I'll do this again, but I noticed there was a little, this is a used CPU from eBay. I noticed there was a little, uh, old thermal paste on it. Don't want to be smearing that everywhere while I'm working here. So I think at this point I'm going to take the Noctua 120 millimeter fan out of the front of that uh, Corsair case uh, so that we can get that all Corsair all-in-one cooler in there and ready to go. And I'm leaving fingerprints all over this. Not that it really matters but that just annoys me. So one of the nice things about this Corsair case, is, or the cooler master case, is that the uh, front panel comes off extremely easily. I've got my Core i5 sticker on there already. Um, I'm going to pull this Noctua fan out of here and get our all-in-one cooler mounted up. But uh, it's a very easy for this form factor of case. It's a very easy case to work on for its relative size. All right, so we've got the Corsair H80 in here in a push-pull configuration. It's going to be exhausting out the front. I think that should work. So you see there's not a lot of room, but it has just enough for this all-in-one cooler. I am hoping that by having the uh, hoses position where I am, like the air bubbles will go to the top of that reservoir and not end up in the pump. I think that should work. It's going to kind of depend on our hose arrangement to a degree probably, but one last step I'm hoping to take care of. Well, this is still outside of the case. It's getting an SSD in here. Oh, the whole standoff's coming with that. I don't have my little standoff tightening tool either, so we will just finger tighten that down. So this is a uh, Samsung Evo. It's a Samsung 850 Evo. This was basically unplayable on a 486. It's a 120 gigabyte model. So interestingly, that's right above the uh, chipset heatsink. So 
I'm not really sure how that's going to affect long-term longevity, but we will see. All right, so this is what we're going with for the cooling solution. I am hoping that we'll have the ability to tuck this out of the way of the uh, power supply when we get that in. Yeah, the power supply actually does have like a mounting bracket where it sticks out a little bit, so I think it will clear. Um, I'm a little concerned that there's no cooling at all, active cooling for the voltage regulator, um, voltage, reg voltage regulators, but I guess we'll see how that goes. This is only an i5, so it's probably going to be okay. All right, so I'm not doing any cable management or anything, but we got USB uh, to the AOI in. We got the USB 3 audio I hooked up just because. And uh, this is not a modular power supply, so this is going to be a little bit of a trick, but we'll see what we can do here getting this thing installed. All right, she fits no problem at all. There's tons of clearance there, so we're fine on that front. I do have an enormous bundle of cables that I'm going to have to shove somewhere, um, but I'm going to get what I do need out of out of this mess uh, hooked up and figure out what to do with the rest of it. Alright, well we got everything so far stuffed in here and it's looking alright. I mean, there's no cable management, but those of you who have seen my previous builds know that cable management is pretty far down my list. Uh, there is like barely daylight squeaking between those dim modules there though and I feel like the alignment is getting pushed out of alignment a little bit by this by this hose here is there yeah I feel like it's kind of colliding there um, but I'm gonna hope that that's okay so the last major component we have is the uh, Juan Juan Juanezy, Juan, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I apologize. I'll look it up. Um, but we have a uh, GTX 1660S. Um, yeah, let's see what we've got in the box here. We've got some foam, a nice envelope, and I think, yeah, that is all she wrote. But the actual GPU itself, I mean, it feels like reasonable quality. Um, the cooler looks like it's got a decent amount of material to it. I think this will probably be just fine, but we won't know until we put it into service here. There's the model number and such. For output, it's very basic DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. This takes a 8-pin power connector, and we should have plenty of room here. This case is actually pretty spacious for, as far as the GPU compartment goes. I'm trying to kind of... I'm mostly putting both thumb screws in just so I don't lose it. I like to keep things together. Uh, that feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and hook up. 8 pin power. Again, this is not modular, so we're going to have extra stuff lying around, but such is life. It looks like the clip is on that side. And consider that cable managed. <laughs> so I'm going to go through the process of installing Windows 11 Tiny on here and see how that goes. So I'll be back when we can get to a remote desktop. Get some video capture. Evidently, it's not happy with the uh, MSATA SSD, so we're gonna throw this boy in there. It's a, a 500 gigabyte uh, 970 Evo. Okay, so while the NVMe is recognized in the BIOS, it doesn't show up in the Windows installation, so I'm starting to think that this, you know, considering its age, it shouldn't be able to boot from an NVMe drive, and I think it probably can't. It can use it, but it can't boot from it. So we are falling back on an old uh, SATA 850 Evo for the Windows boot drive. All right, so we can see in the BIOS here that we have America Mega Trends. Uh, it's a UF, UEFI BIOS. We have the BA, B85ITX, all the 
expected stuff for our Core i5 and our memory, so that all looks good. So it looks like it's actually a relatively full-featured BIOS here. Um, we have all of our turbo modes present. We can't do any overclocking on this um, CPU. So, I, I mean, the B85 ch chipset really shouldn't be able to do that anyway. I'm going to go ahead and disable the onboard audio controller because we're never going to use that uh, in this setup that we're going to be using. Looks like we have all of our sleep and wake on land stuff. SATA configuration, I do want to update one of these to be a uh, hot plug. I believe, yeah, port 2. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn that on. That's the one that has the drive bay in it. And, uh, yeah. It's poking around here a little bit. You see the CPU is running at 83 degrees right now. Um, at first I thought this was inaccurate, but when we get into Windows, we'll see that it actually is accurate. Um, there's some issues with the... Uh, CPU cooler that I'm using. Uh, I had hoped that it wouldn't be a problem. Um, this case is designed for liquid cooling, but unfortunately, uh, the ancient at this point H80i that I have, uh, it's been in storage for years. I think uh, enough coolant must have evaporated that it's just no longer any good. Things pretty much just useless. The fan control here does nothing to help. Uh, I've messed around with the Corsair Link software, didn't do anything either. It does say the pump is running. I can hear a little bit of fluid slot. If I shake it, I can hear fluid sloshing around in there. Uh, but either the pump is actually not working, like the, the impellers have worn down, or um, it's out of coolant to the point where it doesn't properly circulate. So, Or there's a blockage. One of those has to be true. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn on the profile uh, for the XMP profile here to get a little bit better performance out of our memory. And uh, XMP1 is the only one that's supported, so good enough. We'll go ahead and save and exit and see if we can boot up here. So as this, I'm doing this as post-commentary right now because my sound settings were messed up, but... Um, this point the machine was just running really slow and what's happening at this point is that the CPU is so hot that it's being throttled down way down to like a gigahertz. So it's really struggling and then we had updated some changes to the memory as well and I was worried that, that was going to crash but it ends up working out. Um, but the, uh, the CPU is just very sad right now. All right, so everything here is working correctly. We have our Core i5, our 16 gigabytes of RAM. I haven't activated Windows yet um, because I don't know if this installation is going to work out at this point. The uh, Windows defaulted to a huge amount of zoom in. I'm not really sure why, uh, but I'll end up fixing that later, but not yet. I didn't notice it right away. I just thought it was an artifact of the capturing or something like that, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty obnoxious. But if we look into the... Um, Device manager, everything here looks, you know, like it should. So that's good. We have our GeForce GTX 1660, uh, Microsoft Storage Controller, that sort of stuff. So nothing is unknown as far as drivers at this point. I did end up going and downloading um, from Realtek uh, the, uh, an updated version of the drivers for the LAN because I was having a little bit of trouble with the ones that Windows had installed where it was kind of like dropping out the connection but updating the drivers seemed to help. You can see here it's claiming that the pump is running but it's at a completely steady 1366 which is strange because um, it should be ramping up if the CPU is this hot. There's a sensor on this board that just doesn't work. It says 127 degrees all the time so we're just going to ignore that but the CPU is definitely accurate. It's at like 75 degrees right now not good for doing absolutely nothing but you'll see as we actually put a workload on it that it will throttle instantly um so we'll we'll try running a little bit of cinebench r15 here and see what she can do which is not very much at this point and again i apologize that we're zoomed in like that but it is what it is so you can see that we are throttling down to 1.7 gigahertz right now as this goes, it kind of continues to drop. We'll see what the end result ends up being in a minute or two. It's going to take a bit. So 
you can see here, we're about halfway through the test. Our CPU is still at about 82 degrees. The coolant temperature is at 75. The pump has not increased. I do have it hooked up to USB, obviously, because we're getting data from it, but it's not doing any sort of control. It seems like it's just kind of done. So not sure. Maybe there's some way to salvage it. It does. I took it out. Sound like it still has coolant in it, but oh well. The air cooler will be fine in the future. This doesn't, it's limited in what you can do for air cooling. You like can't put a big tower cooler or anything on, but this, again, this is just a Core i5. Uh, and the CPU itself is almost never going to have a heavy load on it, so it'll be okay. All right, so we wrapped up here. We got 168 worse than whatever that mobile, or I think that's maybe uh, an integrated i5 that's on like one of those uh, all-in-one boards, but very poor performance there. Not good at all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and at this point we'll swap out the uh, non-functional all-in-one cooler and uh, see what options we actually end up having here. So I wanted to illustrate with these couple of photos here that the uh, cold plate had very good contact with the CPU. You can see the pattern in the thermal paste. It's just old, not working anymore. Originally I had wanted to use this uh, Arctic Freezer 11 LP after I realized that my uh, Corsair all-in-one cooler was holding temperatures at about 80 degrees. It was not good. Uh, but the uh, board seems to actually use a non-standard layout for the like keep out zone around the CPU uh, socket. There was uh, some sort of uh, component in the way there. Couldn't get this mounted, so I just went with the stock cooler. Seems to be working perfectly fine. The machine's up and running. I just need to add that uh, 3D printed um, fan grill protector so that we don't get wires. I've had a couple instances of wires getting caught up in the uh, intake fan there. Alright, so I ended up going with the default Intel cooler after all. Uh, I got it installed now. Let's see how, how we do booting up here. Um, I do feel like it's maybe a little slower than it was when I... I I'm trying to figure out because I changed the memory profile see if that made an impact i don't really know all right so we are booted up i still have the coursera link software installed not that the device is anymore that's the installer let's not do that uh, i just want to see what it says now that the uh temperature readings are yeah so with the stock intel cooler we're down to 34 degrees which is much more what I would have expected. Let's go ahead and run Cinebench again here. Also, I want to check out what we have for voltages. I mean, not voltages. Um, what we have for speed according to the system monitor here. All right. So let's go ahead and run the CPU test. Already, that's looking way better. We're at 3.57 gigahertz, which I believe is the boost speed for this processor at its default setting. So that seems to have resolved that issue. We are no longer overheating. So I'll let this run, see what kind of score we get. All right, so that brought us up to 508. So that is a huge improvement just with some proper cooling. Goes to show cooling does matter. So, um, Let's go ahead, and I know that this isn't really fair, but I want to kind of make my scoring consistent among all of my machines. Let's go ahead and run R20 here. This is a very old mid-range processor, so I'm not expecting great things from it, but uh, we will see. All right, so let's let it go here. All right, so we are down here about where we would expect to be, just above uh, the previous generation of i5 there. So makes sense to me. For some reason, the scale was way off, so I fixed that on the display here. All right, so we are going to run at basically just a high graphics default here and see how she does. 
No, it's going to take a little bit to load. The poor i5 is just slammed, but this is more about the video card. It might take a while to load, but. Yeah, it just seems unable to load that third scene. See if you use goes way down, so it's not even really trying anymore. It's not frozen though. So I'm gonna call that inconclusive. It was kind of okay when it was running. Pretty good for kind of random assortment of parts, but um, definitely not a gaming powerhouse and this is never gonna run a game again really anyway, so that's fine. All right, so we got good old GPU Z loaded up here, and everything here seems to correlate to exactly what it is supposed to. So I'm feeling pretty good about the quality and that this is in fact valid as far as the GPU goes here. So cool, cool. Let's uh, have a look at CPU Z here. And we already you know we have a genuine core Intel i5 um, main board. That's what I'm kind of interested in looking at. So it can pick up you know, B85 chipset, it says, BIOS version. So it's a relatively recent BIOS for memory, GPU. Uh, let's go ahead and bench the CPU a little bit here. So we'll compare it to a slightly newer i5 there. So pretty not bad. So So yeah, we can see that whatever this sensor is is still registering a crazy temperature that never changes. So some of the sensors on this board just do not work, uh, but that's totally fine. CPU is at 37 degrees. Let's go ahead and see if we can stress that a little bit, get that temperature to rise. So it's been running for a minute or two now and it seems like things have kind of settled in around the 60, 59.5 degree level, you know, up to 60. So the Intel cooler is doing a perfectly adequate job. So I wanted to use this test file. This is just some footage from today um, that I 
uh, captured. It's about seven minutes long. Uh, we're going to use this. Why does it uh, scan it? Hmm. It scans at a different length. That will be interesting. But uh, I want to use a CPU only here first to encode this as a H.265 MKV 1080p 30 frames per second using the default settings that we have here. Um, and then we will try it again using the GPU. This is what I'm actually interested in though because this is what I will be using as my actual general method of re-encoding videos is the GPU. It's the entire purpose of this machine. So we're going to go ahead and start that and see how this goes with hardware encoding. So we were getting on average about 30-ish frames per second. Uh, so we're at 350, which is significantly improved, obviously. Uh, it's estimating this is only going to take about 30 seconds compared to like that other one was going for like 12 or 15 minutes, probably by the time it was finished writing. So let this wrap up and see how we do. We're seemingly still having the trouble of it actually writing the information to the disk correctly. I'm not sure why. Might want, to, I've used this for some encoding before, but I was using the mechanical drive. I wonder if it's an issue with the SSD. What do we have for a file here? 14 megabytes. Is it growing? Yeah, it is. And it just finished, finished. Cool. So what do we get for a time for that? I was not paying attention. So, you know, 30 seconds compared to 12 minutes. That's a pretty big improvement. I am satisfied with how this is working. So that's going to wrap it up for this. I know that this is old hardware, but that was kind of the point. Not everything I use is state of the art. Uh, I like to find uh, machines that are powerful enough to meet the niche that they're for. So this machine will be able to do its job for many, 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 many years. Uh, just like this, even with Windows 11 running, uh, it's just going to quietly chug away. Um, I'm very impressed with the build quality of both the Chinese motherboard and of the GPU. Like I said, I have a few more of these GPUs on the way. They're like $130-ish shipped, um, which is a good price for what they are. Uh, if you looked at comparable prices, you're going to pay a little more for a reputable brand. Not everything has to be expensive and uh, state-of-the-art. All in all, uh, with the GPU motherboard, I already had the case, uh, so I'm, the case is going to vary depending on what you want to do, so we'll leave that kind of out. Uh, but the motherboard was like sub it was like 50, 60 ish dollars. The GPU was 130, so with about $200 for the RAM motherboard and CPU uh, and the GPU. So kind of in conclusion, I guess I would say that this uh, is a mixed bag, you know, for $60, $70, you get the motherboard. Um, it's an old platform, but it does have some new features. If I was using this for Steam, it would be nice to have that NVMe storage. Um, I wasn't able to get it to boot, but you could have like a regular SSD as the boot drive and then a separate Steam drive. It'd be very fast for loading things. Uh, Compared to the alternatives of buying like a used motherboard for this price range, I think it's pretty good. Um, I, especially if you're outside the United States, I think this would probably make more sense. Uh, it's a curiosity. That's kind of what appealed to it about me. Uh, what what appealed to it for me rather. And then as far as the GPU goes, I would actually call the GPU an unqualified good deal. Um, I will have links down in the channel description to the stores that I purchased from. Um, I'm not sponsored or anything like that. It's just where I bought it from. My experience was okay. Your mileage may vary. But uh, definitely, I think it's a good value. Uh, this is going to work well for my specific purpose. You could probably do better with a Ryzen system with this GPU maybe, something like that. Uh, but the GPU is definitely awesome. Motherboard is kind of neat and strange. So anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, please do leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed and leave comments. It definitely helps the channel grow. And uh, I will see you next time.